Hey guys, welcome to the video. This week we are continuing from our bus planning video from last week. A link will be in the description below or you can find it on our channel page. Um, make sure you watch that one first. It'll give you a lot more context and understanding of where we're coming from and the front half of the bus. Uh, so this video is gonna continue into the second half of the bus and into the storage bay below and hopefully we'll complete the whole mental picture you guys have of what this bus is gonna be or what we're hoping it's gonna be. Anyways, I will see you guys next week and I hope you enjoy the video. So in the middle of the bus here, we have an office on one side and then on the other side, we'll have a shower, bathroom and a separate toilet. So over here in the office, the desk will have the same depth as the kitchen counter, which is about 650 millimeters or 26 inches. Our plan is to have our computer screens mounted from the ceiling, so they won't take up any desk space there. And then we'll have a keyboard tray under the desk if we need any extra space. We did find though that sitting at one of these desks in an office chair would really block up the width of the walkway, which is only about 700 millimeters. Our solution to that was to indent the chair space into the desk to allow us to slide in if necessary. That'll be the two desks here in the office space and we're hopefully going to have some storage around them as well as the upper cabinets like everywhere else in the bus. While on the other side we have the separate toilet and the shower bathroom. So for the toilet we're going to be using a compost toilet. Unlike a lot of other RVers, uh, we're not going to be going for a nature's head single system compost toilet. We're actually going to be going for more of a house sized one. Because we have so much space underneath the bus in the undercarriage, we're actually able to put a larger bin down there, which will allow us to use a normal shaped toilet seat up here and would save a lot of space that way. It also means that we don't have to change it as often and all we'll have to do is go down and rotate it once in a while to make sure that it's properly composting anything that's in it. The system we've looked at so far is the EcoFlow toilet. We brought the bus to the manufacturer and they've already checked that the container will fit underneath in the undercarriage as well as an additional section to hold any liquid. Because just like any other compost toilet, these ones separate solid and liquid, evaporate the liquid and then turn the solids into usable compost. So we'll just have to be putting in sawdust or something as we use it um, and it should be able to last us quite a long time without having to change out the bottom. When we visited the manufacturer, manufacturer they actually had one there set up that all their employees use and they had been using it for over a year and hadn't actually changed the bin once and that was for eight to ten people for a year if it's just the two of us with guests occasionally this thing is gonna last forever and although the toilets that they offer are normal looking, they look like any other ceramic toilet you'd have in your house, they actually just have a giant hole down to the bin. So that to me is still pretty strange. Um, so I'm gonna try to figure out how to put like a flap or something on the bottom so at least it can close up again after you use it. But enough about toilets, that's gonna be one room here. And then we're gonna have a separate bathroom or shower. So it's actually pretty common in Australia to have a separate toilet from your bathroom. Uh, it's something I've taken some getting used to, but in the RV it seemed to work really well. It means that someone can be brushing their teeth or having a shower and it doesn't block the other one if they need to use the facilities. For the shower and bathroom, Greg really wanted a 900 millimeter wide shower. It just happened to fit well with the depth of the sofa and everything else down that side of the bus, so it fits in there perfectly. So in visiting our friend's RV, we actually got to see his shower that he had, and it was gorgeous. It was an aluminum powder coated shower, fully surround, absolutely beautiful and he made it himself. He's going to be doing a lot of the welding and stuff on the bus so we're really hoping that he's going to help us with that shower and make us one just like it. It was absolutely wonderful. And then of course we're going to try to fit some kind of window in there high enough that it's not too revealing or anything but enough to let in some light so you can look out and enjoy the day while you're in there cleaning up. On the other side from the shower is going to be a sink and mirror which we're actually going to indent into the wall slightly to offer that little bit more space and it's space that we have behind the dining table anyway. Each of these spaces in this middle section are still going to be blocked off with pocket doors if ever necessary, hopefully soundproofed in some way with fans running to make sure air is circulating at all times as well as the windows. So we'll hopefully keep any smell or humidity from the showers or anything out. Then also something I brought up to Greg a few months ago was the need for an, a second exit to the bus. Um, in Canada and the States it actually seems to be really popular to have an emergency exit from your RV at the other end or something like that. Um, so it just 
seem normal to me. But not only for emergencies, it'll also make sure that if Greg's at the front sleeping or something, I don't have to walk all the way through, interrupt him, invade his privacy in his room uh, to get in or out of the bus. So although I suggested the door back in the back bedroom to save space and stuff, Greg came up with the brilliant idea of putting it in the bathroom or shower. So in this room, we're hoping to have an airplane style door that kind of cantilevers out and turns into stairs so you can walk down. We're pretty high up right now with the undercarriage below us, so you do have to get down quite a ways from this level. So with the door cantilevering out from the bathroom, we'll be able to use that as a wet room. This will let us, if it's ever raining or muddy, just go in there and hose off our shoes or boots. If we ever go swimming in the ocean and are salty and just want a quick shower, we can go right in there and it also allows us to have an access point for an outdoor shower. We can always make sure that the shower head is longer, can hook outside, and then can flow from there. So having the door in that bathroom is super handy. But overall, that's the middle section of the bus, the office, the toilet, the bathroom and shower, and it's kind of the central bit. With pocket doors on either side, it allows me to be sleeping in one end and Greg to be sleeping in the other. And for both of us, we are able to access all the facilities without interrupting either person. As we move back in the bus, we have an entire space that's really just storage or a usable area. We are going to be using this space for our front-loading washer and dryer, which are going to be five-star and super efficient, um, as well as a printer that will be accessible from the office. But besides general storage of a computer parts and equipment for the office, um, we'll also have clothing storage, maybe dirty laundry, anything like that that we need stored back here. And this also offers a little bit of space from the back bedroom to create kind of an ensuite. Um, the bed at the back is going to be taking up most of the space there so in order to get dressed or get ready or anything like that I'll be able to hop out of bed and have this space which is just a little bit wider and a little bit more spacious and that will be really really handy. With the bed in the back, the only thing we really have to watch out for is making sure that the engine hatch is still accessible. So the bed is going to be on a lifting cantilever, and then underneath the rest of the space is going to be used for storage as well. At this point, we're pretty set on this layout. We've already looked into which windows we want in each room, and we're ready to order them. Um, so once they're ordered and we know the size of everything, we can pop out the windows, raise the roof, and get it all going. Now that I've showed you everything in here, I'm gonna take you outside, show you the undercarriage and just how much space we have down there. It's also really hot in this bus right now because it's the middle of the day and none of these windows have ventilation. So I have a fan going at the front, but I'm literally melting. So let's get out of here and get some air. <laughs> That is so much better. In the middle of the day, with the sun beating down on the bus and not being able to open the windows, Wilma just turns into a complete oven. But anyway, we're down here checking out the undercarriage or the storage bay. As you can see, it is massive. So this would normally be where people put their luggage and things for the coach bus, but we're gonna be using it all for storage. As the storage bay is so big, it offers us a little bit of flexibility with what we do in terms of the living and office space above. It also means that if we have anything that's overly noisy, we can insulate it down here and not be able to hear it from above. Or if anything down here leaks or anything like that, it won't damage all the finishings and things within the actual bus. The storage bay is approximately nine square meters, but as we've done our planning and done all the layouts and stuff, Greg and I have slowly realized that we're gonna have a lot less space left over than we initially thought. Initially, we were like, oh yeah, we can just throw it down here. It'll be fine. Yeah, no. Between everything we actually have to put down here and then the little bit of storage space and flexibility that we want left over, it's all gonna be a really tight squeeze. So down here we need batteries, water tanks and storage, uh, the water filtering system or osmosis pumps, the compost toilet bin as well as the liquid container and anything we need to do the evaporating containment of that. Um, we're gonna have, what else goes down here? I have a list. So on top of that, we also have the compressors from the freezer and the fridge. We're hoping to put a pull-out barbecue down here to have some storage space for other things that we may not want up top. Um, we're also hoping to install a vacuum system so that bin and everything will be down here. Um, it's it's going to be a tight squeeze. We're trying to figure out the best way to do it, keep liquid away from electrics and all that stuff. Um, but I think it should be good. Other things we're putting on the lower half of the bus include a generator. We're hoping to have it contained and insulated and stuff, obviously well vented, but to keep the noise down. So if necessary, we can run it overnight for the AC or anything like that. 
Um, we're also looking to do an extra fuel tank, as I mentioned earlier. And then a lot of the compressors and things that are at the back by the engine are related to the air conditioning unit and things like that that we're not going to have. So we're taking those out and we'll have a little bit more space there. So there is flexibility in what we're doing down here, but it'll definitely it'll definitely fill up a lot faster than we want it to. And then you may be wondering where everything else will go. We've been talking a lot about paramotoring, kayaking, motorbiking, everything like that. And none of that will actually fit down here with everything else in. What we're actually wanting to do is tow a four wheel drive truck behind the bus. It may seem excessive. Greg is still trying to convince me of the overall expanse of it, but that will be holding anything we need for a day out or an overnight somewhere. So it'll be what we use for any of our off-roading days um, to get to the more remote places and then we'll be able to come back and have this as our home base. So that truck will end up holding the motorbikes, paramotors, kayaks, the boat, um, probably some camping gear as well in case we can't get back in time. and. I guess anything else we need for our days out. We are also hoping to have some kind of cooking or barbecue system on the truck as well as water tanks and fuel tanks and stuff. So all of that will be figured out later. But none of that will be down here, luckily, because although it may not look like it now, there really won't be much space. And then of course, once the roof is raised and the air conditioning units are installed, we will be putting 4.6 kilowatts of solar power on top of the roof. It'll help shade the roof from the sun to reduce the amount of heat coming into the bus while also helping to power everything we're doing. The solar panels will be hooked up to a Victron unit. Um, I think is what it's called. Is it called a Victron unit? So with the solar panels, we'll be using a Victron energy management system, which will be connected to the batteries and the generator as well. The goal is that the system will allow them to all be interconnected and that we'll never be without power. The generator will be a diesel generator, which means it'll run off of the fuel tanks that we have. And then the batteries, we believe, are going to be just normal lead acid batteries. The lithium, lithium? Lithium. The lithium ion batteries that we are considering putting in here instead, which would take up a lot less space, are still a little bit out of our price range. So that means we're probably going to have to use a lot more lead acid batteries. Overall, those three things kind of minimize our power use to diesel and electric. Um, everything on the bus is going to be as efficient as possible. We are going for the higher end things that are five star ratings where possible. Um, Although it will bring up our costs on that end, it'll bring down the energy use and make it a lot more efficient for what we're doing. And then of course, along with efficiency, we're also going for design and a nice aesthetic within the bus. Um, I think what we're going for is a mix between bohemian chic and just a modern, clean, open space. So we're gonna do a lot of white, some wood grains. Uh, the floor is gonna be linoleum with hospital rounded corners to make it really easy to clean. Uh, we'll probably be looking at a darker tile look or a wood grain finish kind of thing. And then yeah, everything else will just kind of be the soft grays, the cozy feels, making it very homey, and as well as just punches of color here and there to make sure it's still fun and a nice place to live. Greg's left a lot of the interior design stuff up to me, so I have a lot more research to do on that. Um, but I'm really excited to be able to finally fit it out, rebuild everything inside, and complete the renovation. So the wind is just picking up here, which probably means we're in store for an afternoon shower. Uh, with all the humidity and stuff out here, it's really, really common in the afternoon to just get sudden half an hour to hour of complete downpour. So before that starts, I'm gonna call it quits for the day. Hope you guys enjoyed the summary of our bus planning, the bus layout, all the research we've done in terms of what we wanna put in the bus. Of course, we're taking a lot of inspiration from other videos, other people who've converted buses or RVs or anything like that. So if you have any more suggestions, questions, comments, please leave them in the comment section below and we'll answer as many as we can. Um, also, don't forget to like and subscribe if you like what you see. Ring that notification bell uh, to get updates of when we post our next video. And you can also find some fre frequent, <laughs> and you can also find some regular updates on Facebook and Instagram if you want to follow along there. So I'm gonna go cool off, and I will see you guys later. Bye.